Mums putting their daughter in the, the show Toddlers and Tiaras. Have you seen this? Dad's screaming at their kids to be the next Wayne Gretzky, whoever he is. Uh, I'd shoot them all, but that's just me. Now, Vivian Diller is probably more gentle in her approach. She's a psychologist, an author who is a professional ballet dancer, just like me again, uh, before she became a professional model, just like me. Uh, she joins me from New York. Welcome to you. Hi, nice to be here. Now, you can't see me, so you wouldn't uh, realize just how amusing it was, the idea of me doing ballet um, or being a model. Now, when I see on television th this, these shows, little kids dressed up, and I think sexualized as well, it makes me very angry. I think it's almost abusive. Your opinion, please. Well, the problem with these shows is that on one hand, they're riveting. Uh, people are drawn to watch. On the other hand, they're quite repulsive. Um, the point I make when I talk about these shows is that although we're watching it in real life, this is the kind of parenting, unfortunately, that we're seeing more than just on reality television. We're seeing them uh, in the sports arenas. You know, we're seeing them on the soccer fields and the baseball uh, fields, and we're seeing them on spelling bees, and we're seeing them on talent competitions. It's really about a, a narcissistic investment by parents uh, in their children's talents. The reason it's kind of revol revulsing, uh, repulsive in um, Toddlers and Tiaras is in part because these kids are so young, and it's in part because it's so focused on beauty. Mm. Um, but I'd say that the narcissistic investment, and by that I mean, let me be clear, because narcissism is used in many ways these days. Most people think of it as the person who's sort of full of themselves and, and selfish and pompous. The fact is, narcissism in psychology is really about self-esteem problems, uh, mm. regulation of self-esteem pathology. Mm -hmm. So what we're seeing are parents whose self-esteem is actually quite low, and they're using their children to fuel that self-esteem, and they do it at the expense of their children's needs. That's where we're really seeing the pathology. Okay, now that, that's very good, actually. I, I, I agree with that. The, the difference, though, and, and, and we can talk in greater depth shortly, the difference is when you scream for your son, generally your son playing hockey or soccer or whatever, that's one thing, and it can be very problematic. But when you, you dress your daughter as a sexual object, as an adult woman when she's three and four years old, there's an added problem there because it, it's, it's a too early sexualization. And even if the children themselves aren't aware of it, other people looking at them are aware of it. I, I think that is an added element. You're right. Uh, not only is it a sexualization, it is putting girls, young girls, in a competitive arena about their looks, which we anyway live in such an unrealistic competitive environment with Photoshop and airbrushing, so that if you start this very early, where girls are getting, uh, you know, these tans and fake eyelashes and fake bosoms, you know, you have to think, what is it doing to the minds of these children? The, the really sad moments, though, of these shows, you know, you see some girls having fun with that, but the sad moments are when the girls want to stop doing it. And when they want to stop, that's when you see the narcissistic pathology, because a parent doesn't really listen to a child at that moment who needs that child to do for them what they need for their own uh, self-esteem. Mm -hmm. So a child who says, I don't want to practice that routine anymore. Mom, I'm tired. I want to go out and play. You see a kind of abandonment by that parent that then makes the girl feel like the only condition upon which I'm loved is if I perform for my mom or dad. Yeah. So I say this about the baseball fields because to me, although the sexualization and the, you know, the emphasis on beauty is another issue and it's sad, it's epidemic. You know, Tierra's, uh, Toddlers and Tierra's is a very small group of people. Two million people watch, but there's a very small group participating in that. When you spread it out to all these young children who are feeling a demand upon their childhood that they excel, that they do something special with their lives, you know, that they become the next American Idol. It can start as early as two or three when yeah. the parent is videotaping them and putting them on YouTube and they want the world to see. To me, that is in a certain way an insidious um, way of parenting that I think we need to look at more well, carefully. I, I certainly agree with you. I mean, uh, kids, little girls in particular, will dress up. If little boys do, could be a bit of an issue, but that's another uh, another interview. But when little little girls do well, they dress sleep up, with their baseball gloves. Well, little girls, that's healthy dressing. But I mean, little girls will dress up. But it, it must be the, their their own idea, and they have fun. That's completely innocuous. In fact, that's rather constructive. It's when they're encouraged, if if not even told to, they're encouraged to dress in a certain way that they're not aware is sexual. 
In Canada, I'm sure the U.S. is the same. If if a parent spanks a child on the bum on the hand, there can even be a charge. If if a parent um, smokes in the car with a child, there can be a charge. But if a parent dresses a little girl as a little hooker, then nothing will happen. I I, I really, much as I, I do not want more state intervention, it seems to me that's abusive behaviour. Um, I I have to agree. I uh, I think that if we learn from watching that show that there is child abuse going on in subtle ways, then we've learned something that maybe uh, we can intervene. But I I, I do want to say that it, there's that kind of subtle um, abuse, meaning pushing a child to do something that is not in their best interest goes on in a much wider uh, group. I, I say this in part because my practice happens to be filled with uh, young, talented kids and their families. I happen to have, because I was a, a ballet dancer and yeah. a model, I've gotten those uh, people in my practice. So I am watching uh, say Olympic um, uh, potentials. Uh, and this isn't a sports world. This is not dressing them up in these bizarre costumes. But the fact is when you have to be, say, an Olympic skater, and uh, working with uh, a coach from age six, seven, and you are wearing maybe not sexualized costumes, but you are on that ice day after day, and you start to not want to do it, and you have a parent who's pushing you because they have yeah. Olympic medals in mind. I'm saying that I, I understand your particular okay. focus on that show, right. but I think that I, it's I a larger issue. I understand, and it's doubly ironic because skating isn't even a real sport. But uh, let's. There's a, there's a new report. That's in, talking about Canadian. No, huh? I, I, I don't. There's a, a new report. And this, this is great, great. Just briefly on this in, in Canada, that, that children uh, competition can hurt them. So um, if they're a winner or a loser. Um, if they're second or third place, this can be damaging to them. So everyone's a participant, everyone's the same. Um, real life isn't like this. I, I've put four kids through sport and at a pretty advanced level, certainly with, 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 with two of them. They know when they lose, it can be upsetting, but that's also part of life. And winning too. This idea that you must protect children from reality while, of course, making them more sexual as, as young as possible, just very briefly, it's a bad idea, isn't it? Um... You know, I think the drive to not give um, medals or first place, second place winner, winner trophies is really driven by parents who all want their children to be the winners. <laughs> they don't want anybody to lose. The kids actually can tolerate it quite well uh, if they're taught that some people win and some people don't. Yeah. So I think, again, it's being driven by a kind of dr uh, parenting style that they want every child to feel like they are the best. And I think, actually, in the real world, we have to learn that that's not always true. That's sort of the story of my life. I, I've, I've learned that from an early age. I'll never be the best. Uh, <laughs> we can be the best we can be, but we don't oh, have to please, be the best. Oh, please, the best we can be. No, no, no. Come on. I'm a Tottenham Hotspur <laughs> fan. I've had to live with that for, for 40 years. It's a, a, a great pleasure. You seem to be one of the few sane psychologists in the United States. Thank you so much uh, for your that's time. That's a real compliment. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. You take care. Thank you so much. Bye -bye. Nice